Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, it is Poetry Thursday, so I wanted to explore some interesting poetry that I've read. Uh, and because it is Black History Month, I also wanted to highlight a, uh, a Black poet, and uh, whether it be from America or abroad, that has um, interested me. Uh, and, and hopefully talking about one that I haven't really, um, you know, encountered on this channel before, because it's always good to broaden your horizons. Um, but today's poem is all about New York City, I think. It's a bit unclear. I am referring to The End of an Ethnic Dream by Jay Wright. For those who don't know, Jay Wright is an African-American author uh, who's been getting published since the 1950s. He's been alive since the 1930s, getting quite a bit of work published, whether it be uh, poetry or uh, anthologies of poetry, uh, plays, or other such works. Uh, he's often been compared to T.S. Eliot, although he doesn't have nearly as much acclaim or notoriety as T.S. Eliot um, for one reason or another, possibly because uh, maybe because he's black, but also because in the modern age, poetry doesn't really drum up that, uh, that level of fame like it used to. Uh, but, um, in addition to that, in addition to being, you know, proclaimed like T.S. Eliot, um, his work has often been noted as in been featuring heavily uh, things like mythology and his own uh, his own experiences in life and uh, sort of city life uh, as well. Um, and his poetry can be a bit indirect at times, focusing on the abstract. Uh, although there are sometimes like um, people and stuff in his poems, he still doesn't really focus directly. And I've talked about a couple of the, those poems on this channel before. And this this poem, uh, The End of an Ethnic Dream, is, is one of them. Uh, not always clear to understand or, or fun to talk about, especially since I'm kind of like just guessing. But, you know, we always have to... Um, to find the vast array of poetry when talking about poetry on Poetry Thursday. Uh, and so without further ado, let's talk about this poem. I will read it, do a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. The End of an Ethnic Dream. Cigarettes in my mouth to puncture blisters in my brain. My base a fine piece of furniture. My fingers soft, too soft to rattle rafters in second-rate halls. The harmonies I could never learn stick in Eiler's screams. An African chant chokes us, my image shot. If you look off over the Hudson, the dark cooperatives spit at the dinghies floating up the night. A young boy pisses on lovers, rolling against each other under a trackless L. This could have been my town, with light strings that could stand a tempo. Now it's the end of an ethnic dream. I've grown intellectual, go on accumulating furniture and books, damning literature writing for myself, calculating the possibilities that someone will love me or sleep with me. 18-year-old girls come back from the southern leers and make me cry. Here there are coffee shops, bars, natural tonsorial parlors, plays, streets, pamphlets, days, sun, heat, love, anger, politics, days, and sun. Here we shoot off every day to new horizons, coffee shops, bars, natural tonsorial parlors, plays, streets, pamphlets, days, sun, heat, love, anger, politics, days, and sun. It is the end of an ethnic dream, my base a fine piece of furniture, my brain blistered. And so that was the end of an ethnic dream in terms of analysis. Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> no, I'm joking there. But uh, the in terms of analysis, um, I think uh, Jay Wright is talking about New York City in this poem, or uh, like New York City and the fact that he uh, or the narrator in this poem hasn't lived up to their lived up to their potential. Um, as as um, had a lot of promise at one point, but did not um, did not deliver. And you see that in the first verse, they say cigarettes in my mouth to puncture blisters in my brain. 
And when I think they, the narrator says blisters in my brain, I think they're referring to cancer lesions or something like that. I don't know. It, it just it just strikes me when you say cigarettes and blisters, and that those could be the those could that could relate to cancer. Uh, my base, a fine piece of furniture, which means he's not playing his base. He's he's leaning on it. He might be sitting on it. He's clearly not playing it, and so it's it's going to waste gathering dust there. Uh, my fingers soft, too soft to rattle rafters and second-rate halls, which is an which is a very good uh, line right there, and um, how it's alliterative and whatnot. Um, but like his fingers are too soft, which means they don't like he doesn't have blisters on it. Like he's not he hasn't been playing his instruments. The harmonies I could never learn stick in Eiler's screams. Eiler being a saxophonist, um, a well-known saxophonist in New York City. That's why I I, I lean towards New York City for the setting of this poem. But he could never learn these harmonies, so he's not as good as Eiler. Like, he never lived up to the promise and never really was able to gain notoriety like a, like a person named Eiler. An African chant chokes us, my image shot. My image shot especially highlights how maybe he... Um, like he he's ruined his own reputation in this in this poem, uh, so you can tell a lot. Like there's there's a sense of failed promise, and then he says, if you look off over the Hudson, the dark cooperatives spit at the dinghies floating up the night. Um, he talks like a, a a boy pissing on people, which is weird. Like under a trackless L, and from perspective, like where would you see a trackless L? And like it seems like he's looking at the Bronx or maybe certain aspects of Brooklyn from uh, from the perspective of New York City, uh, and like it doesn't really look good. So we, maybe he's comparing like the lost promise of the Bronx or Brooklyn to the um, to his own lost promise kind of making a comparison there that you can't really see directly unless you read between the lines and, and try to um, try to uh, like figure out where he's referring to and how he's feeling. Later in the poem, there, there's a bit of repetition. He says, here there are coffee shops, bars, natural tonsorial parlors, plays, streets. And then in the next verse, he says, here we shoot off every day to new horizons, coffee shops, bars. And I think it's meant to be funny, a bit of, a bit of humor in the poem, but it could also mean that um, a, a bit of irony that maybe there aren't new horizons because you're going to the same place every single day. Nothing is changing and your life isn't be becoming any any better and so when he says it's the end of an ethnic dream he could be referring to new york city how there was once promise for the city uh and now there's not but he could also be referring to himself how maybe there was once promise for him or people like him but now there there's 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 nothing he's just sitting on his instrument uh wasting away the days and not really growing uh as a human being uh, in, that, in that way, the poem is um, extremely negative, very sad. Um, uh, but I don't think it can be, really be read any other way besides, besides that negative. If you see any other po potential perspective, you know, comment below. Uh, I would love to hear what you think about this type of poem. Anyway, those were my thoughts on The End of an Ethnic Dream by Jay Wright. I highly recommend that you read it, so I'm going to put a link to it in the description. Let me know, again, let me know what your thoughts are below, uh, and let's have a fun little discussion about the, whatever this poem could possibly mean. Uh, otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about this poem or this author if they do not already know, or Poetry Thursday if they want to start doing their own poetry readings and examining poetry in, in critical detail. But until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird travels and your ethnic dreams. Farewell.